Do you have any examples of like how you guys are engaging uh, either your LPs or, or in the angel community, either either kind of fund or, or, or group, but like how are your LPs helping support your founders and, and portfolio companies? Sure, there's a couple of, of ways. So on the in the early stages before we invest, there are, are um, quite a few of our LPs who have helped us with due diligence. So we, we obviously invest in workflow tech and uh, those who have experience in that area will look at a lot of deals for us, which is fabulous. Um, and then once we invest in companies, the, the number one and two things that founders ask for are intros to customers and intros to adi additional financing sources. And I think hiring has probably eclipsed financing sources in the last few years. But um, we, we do a lot to work with our LPs who can make customer intros. That's been very successful. Nice. What about, um, have you got any guidance from, from your LPs of like, hey, here's what I want to get out of this relationship outside of, outside of financial returns? Like, are, are they doing it for other reasons outside of just uh, financial returns, whether it's, um, you know, jumping in for the first time and, 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 and backing the future of work? Like, what, what guidance have you gotten or from like expectations of, of what LPs want out of the relationship? I think it really varies depending on what the particular LP is looking for. And limited partners can be high net worth individuals, family offices, corporates, uh, fund of funds, other institutions like pensions and endowments and foundations. So it, it really is a quite a range of the types of organizations and people who are investing in funds. And from, from my experience, I think uh, those who invest or want to invest in our firm they have to like our team and trust our team. They have to like our vision and our portfolio construction strategy. Um, they have to they have to really believe in our ability to get those outsized returns. And, and so at the end of the day, the financial piece is number one. But I, I have come to believe that that trust is foundational in terms of LPs making decisions about who to invest in or what to invest in. And then also, do they like us? Um, are, we, are we a team that, that they want to spend their time with and that they want to be getting updates from us and they want to provide assistance to us and to our portfolio companies? So the relational aspect of, uh, or the, the relationship aspect of venture is extremely important, not just for attracting internal hires and co-investors and founders, but also for loan partners. Yeah, that's awesome. I, uh, in, a, in a quick plug, if, if you check out our template library um, on our website, the URL is in the, here in the bottom right. Um, we'll make sure to link to it, but uh, we have some awesome templates that uh, any, any GPs you can check out. Um, we have what Brian Hoover uses at the weekend fund uh, for his LP template. Uh, we have a couple other popular ones, either for internal sharing with, the, with your team or uh, more of a concise quarterly LP update. So um, make sure to check those out. And um, I want to jump into the, the tear sheet that we mentioned. So uh, I think Vitalize does uh, maybe the best, if not one of the best jobs of uh, using um, at least our, our tear sheet product, but we, we kind of met, not, uh, modeled this after what they were doing before Visible um, of sharing information every single quarter about the uh, each of the portfolio companies. Um, and maybe just to kind of break down and, and tear down this tear sheet, um, I would love just to kind of go through this with, with you, Gail, and just kind of understand uh, maybe why you're sharing something um, and, and the benefit that it's, you're getting in, from that. So maybe let's start in the top, uh, I mean, top, top left. I know this sounds obvious, but you're sharing description, why Vitalize invested, and in the company's website. Does that description, like, we can talk about that. Does the description over change over like every quarter or year, or is it more or less static? We do update those a couple times a year because we're investing at seed stage, and th this should always be refined. I mean, we're always mm -hmm. refining our tagline at Vitalize, and I think I think most good companies do. So we do update that. We actually just added why Vitalize invested, and um, we realized we needed to do that because our LPs are really busy. And sure, when we have our, um, our management letter up front, we'll talk about some of those things, why we're invested and why we're excited for certain deals, but they're not going to go back in time. So we created the company details section so that they can always see what the company is and they don't have to remember it. 
they know why we invested and they know how to find more information through the website. So that section is static and, and, and will stay there except for, you know, those um, periodic updates to the description as needed. Yeah. And then the, the updates, so you have the qualitative updates and how LPs can help. What are you sharing? Uh, we, we touched on the, how LPs can help with the hiring and, and some of the, the customer intros and things like that. What kind of things are you sharing in qualitative updates uh, about the particular company? Our first bullet tends to be something on revenue because after doing 100 plus deals, I mean, revenue growth trumps everything except for maybe capital efficiency. You know, you have to have revenue growth in this business. So if you look at the bottom, sure, there's revenue um, and there's you can see versus last quarter and versus the same quarter last year. But what's the run rate of the company? Where are they in terms of their trajectory towards um, that annual revenue run rate? We'll typically put something about that in there. Um, we list any key hires, any key partnerships won, any key challenges, any fundraises that have just happened or are coming. It, it's really, if I had talked to, to Mike and gotten a quick update on how his performance is doing and any, any good and bad things that are happening, that's the, the basis from which we write the qualitative update. Yeah, awesome. Uh, anything, uh, investment info, we have you know some of your known suspects around how much we invested, uh, current value, um, anything you want worth maybe mentioning or, or calling out here in the, in the middle section? We're still tweaking this. I don't love okay. it. Um, here, here's, here's, what I, here's what I know. Like, for example, we used to have, instead of multiple uninvested capital, which is going to be, you know, let's say it's, it's 3x, it'll say 3x. Well, we used to have a percentage on there, which is confusing because usually you see percentages with IRRs. So we're constantly learning here. And my, my goal moving forward, we're hopefully about to bring on an, a, a CFO or a controller. Um, and that person, I want them to go and see, like, find a bunch of other reports that, um, that seed and a funds are doing and what does Cambridge associates report and how does PitchBook report and any of the, the industry standards out there. And let's make sure that we're showing this exactly like an institutional LP would expect. Mm, yeah. So we're, it's close, but this needs some work. Yeah. And then in this bottom section, I think this is where you guys excel. Uh, and that is around some of the, the, the core metrics here. Um, and we have kind of the, the quarterly number, uh, and then you have what it was versus the previous quarter. So we can see, you mentioned revenue growth. Um, so you can see a quarter over quarter and year over year. Um, and then you have revenue, uh, cost of sale, that's gonna give you margin automatically. You got expenses, EBITDA, cash, and runway. Um, I'd be curious, I, I, I think this is amazing. How, um, how is this being leveraged for the LPs? Like when LPs are consuming this, um, outside of like revenue growth, is there anything else that they might be asking you about or digging into when they're doing um, this kind of mini p and and balance sheet? Yeah, this, once again, we iterated over a few years to get to, get to this point. Um, obviously, revenue is, is critical, but there are businesses um, and we're focused on software where we really do want to see over time that the gross margins are approaching 80 to 85%. So if, if we're not there, we want to understand why. And um, in terms of, of expenses over time, those should be um, becoming more controlled depending on how quickly the trajectory of growth looks because back to capital efficiency, they, the companies have to figure out revenue growth without spending a ton of money at some point in time, most often. There are mm -hmm. definitely outlier cases but we're, we're the type of investor that looks at fundamentals. Um, and that's why, you know, we do include expenses in EBITDA here because there are absolutely companies in our portfolio that never needed to raise after we put money in and are already a cash flow break even and are still growing nicely from a revenue perspective. And so we want to make sure that we're capturing that because um, the value of those companies sits on the books at the valuation of the last round in, even though they continue to do well. And if we were to go and try to raise capital or sell that business today, it would be worth much more. Um, and the, the LPs who review that can understand that the health of the business is strong based on looking at the metrics here at the bottom. And then the most important thing is obviously cash balance and months of runway. And any, and this is really critical for any founders out here or investors, 
when a company is less than six months, we, we want to understand how that is going and what we can do to help. Because the closer to zero that the months of runway get, the harder it is for us to have any path forward as investors. Mm-hmm. Um, once we get to three or two months, like we're definitely in, this is this is a red flag area and we have to figure out how we can help the company ASAP. Yeah. Uh, what's really cool about this too, uh, not to plug my own product, uh, but I will, is I believe Vitalize is only actually asking the founders for like a couple metrics here, revenue and cost of goods sold. Um, we automatically calculate margin for you. Uh, then you have expenses that the founder will provide. We can get EBITDA automatically. And then we ask for cash. Uh, in the months where we can uh, computate based on the other metrics. So uh, it's really clean, uh, but gives uh, Gail and, and then the Vitalize LPs a lot of insight just from, from, four, from four inputs. 